go out and begin to serve me in the community. You see, here we get ready to serve God. We serve God out there. As we leave this place, we're to carry the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the life to which God calls you. He has given you all, for he is your inheritance. He's given you everything he has. Does that not open for you a limitless opportunity? Absolutely. <laughs> to know that you and I have all the resources of God, all the power of God, all the blessings of God, all the favor of God in our lives and hearts. And it opens up an unlimited possibility for us. There are no limits in this. When we worship our God, our God is unlimited. Can you say amen this morning? Amen. And when we take what we've received in here out there, others will look and see that we have been before God. Just like the Levites. Does that not remove the feeling of loneliness and failure in your life? It does mine. Oh, how I failed, failed him so many, many, many times. You say, preacher, you're a preacher and you failed God. Sure. Who of us in here has not failed God? The greatest Christian that's ever lived has failed God at one time or another. And, and this this removes the feeling of failure from me to know that God has blessed me. I want to tell you this morning, God wants you for himself. God wants you for himself. The rest of Israel wrote off the Levites, and God says, they may not want you, but I want you. Can you say amen this morning? Isn't that a wonderful feeling? If, if everybody else in the world doesn't want you, I want to tell you this morning, God wants you. God wants you for himself, for himself. And in that, you are of all things most secure, <laughs> most secure. In the times of insecurity, you are secure. God wants you for himself. And you're saying, me? Yes, you. <laughs> Yes, you. I'm talking to you. God wants you for himself. But the greatest service in all the world is to go in the sanctuary of God for men and to come out of the sanctuary into the world for God. The third thing I want to leave you, and I want to close, and it is this. It is this. And I want you to look at it. It will be on the screen in just a moment. God never allows your past to keep you from serving him. Do we understand something here? I, I want you to listen to me. Simeon and Levi were brothers, and they committed murder, heinous murder. And they came before the man of God. They came before their father and confessed their sin. And you know what? Their father would not forgive them. But God forgave them. Amen? God forgave them. There is no sin too great for God to forgive. I want to tell you this morning, I want to remind all of us, sin is sin. With God, there's no little sins, there's no big sins. There's no in-between sins. There's no giant sins. There's no medium sins. There's no small sins. There is just sin. And sin is that which separates one from God. But that sin is forgivable. Amen? That sin is forgivable. Little did they know, these two brothers, little did they know, while they were in the wilderness, what the future would bring to them. And if you really want to get into that, Write these scripture references down. I'll give them to you. We'll not take time to look at them this morning. And I want you to, to study through them this week. In Genesis chapter 34, verses 25 through 31, you will find the history of these two brothers. You'll find the history of what I'm talking to you about this morning. Genesis chapter 34, verses 25 through 31, and Exodus chapter 32, verse 26. 
Genesis 34, verses 25 through 31, and Genesis 32 and verse 26. Little did these brothers know when they were wandering around in that wilderness of sin in their life what the future would bring. Even before you were born, God knew you. God knew you and was with you in your infancy. He was with you in your childhood. He is with you now in your adulthood. God has never, never left you. Can you say amen? amen. And all along in that wilderness with Levi and Simeon, God was with them. God never leaves you as his child. He never has left you. He never shall leave you. That encourages my heart. He's there for you. In the darkest hours of your need, God has never been far from you. In the wilderness of your sin, each of you reached out to God, and he saved you, and the Lord God of Israel became your inheritance. Became your inheritance became all that you could not muster up, all that you could not achieve, all of your failures. He became more than that. He became your inheritance. I want to tell you something. The God of this book is my God and your God, if you're his child. And he has said to us, Unequivocally, no strings attached. No matter what happens to you, I will still be your God. I'm reminded of the prodigal son who squandered his father's living, ended up in a pig pen with the hogs and eating the slop that the hogs ate. That's what sin will do to an individual. But he woke up one morning in the pig pen and he said, I will arise and go to my father. I have sinned grievously against him and against my family, but I know my Father will receive me. David, that, that's a wonderful blessing. My father, my earthly father, never denied me. Never. I did a lot of things that displeased him and my mother, but I never was void of their love. Never. And I, I felt that and I knew that. Even when I was so far away from God, I knew that. I knew that. And the prodigal son said, I will arise from here and go to my father's house. There's plenty of bread. There's food on the table. And look, I have nothing but my daddy. When he sees me, he will embrace me. Give God a praise this morning. Amen. When nobody else loves you, Papa loves you. Amen. Papa loves you. Papa loves you. I want to close with this passage. You remember I told you a moment ago that Ephesians and Joshua are companion books. Go side by side. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 1. I want to close with these powerful words, beautiful words. Ephesians chapter 1. Let's begin in verse 4, actually. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, that is to God, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him, that is in Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of, time, of the times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and are on earth in him. In him also... We have been ordained, we have been, we have ordained, obtained an inheritance. My bifocals are messing up on me. <laughs> we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him, him 
and the works of things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. I told you wrong, my contacts did not mess up. My tears are flowing and I couldn't see that good. But I saw enough to know that he knew me when I didn't know him from this passage in Ephesians. And he understood what I never understood along the journey of my life. I never dreamed in the further stretch of my imagination that today I would stand here in front of you as your pastor. I never dreamed that. I never dreamed that. But I remember something my mother told me when I told her that God was calling me to preach when I was a senior in high school in 1958. I went in and told my mom, Dad was out in the fields, and she said, what is it, Henry? And I said, I've got something to tell you. She said, what? I said, God's called me to preach. And she said, yes, I know. <laughs> she could have knocked me over with a feather. I said, how did you know? And I want you to listen to this. She said, the day you were born, I held you in my arms. And your daddy and I dedicated you to God. And I'm not surprised because that day we dedicated you, I gave you back to God. I released you. And I stand before you as a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ through no merits of my own, but through the inheritance I have in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Isn't God good? God is good. And all the time. Are you satisfied with your lot in life? Don't complain too much. It may be that's where God has put you right now. But that doesn't necessarily mean you'll have to stay there. Okay? The gospel and the word of God is not complicated. It's powerful, it's pure, and it's true, and it's simple. And it's down to earth. It's down to earth. The satisfied life. We have an inheritance in him. The God of this Bible, whom I know and whom you know, owns everything. And guess what? We are his children. And what is his is ours. All of his resources all of his power, all of his blessings, all of his mercy and his grace is ours. It ought to make us happy. It ought to make us feel satisfied. Let's stand to our feet in prayer. Would you join with me?